Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome to another beautiful, absolutely sunny, awesome 70 degree day here just before Christmas, man. It's unbelievable. Today we're going to have some fun. We're finally going to break out the Woodmiser LT40. We got the ATV here. This thing has a two inch ball. We're going to hitch up to it. We're going to pull down to a big pile of logs. If you caught yesterday's video, you saw us piling up logs. Well, we actually went and got more and more and more logs. So we've got probably $10,000 worth of very, very nice veneer lumber that we're going to start cutting on the sawmill. This is a learning process. Today will be my first day, so we're gonna put some kind of trashy, older logs on there first, and then we're gonna kinda of go to the nicer logs. So come along today as we show you what an old garbage log that's in the woods turns into once you put it on the wood miser sawmill. And this will be my first time using the mill. It's awesome. I've got a few tips and tricks I'm gonna show you here as we get hooked up. All right. I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my own damn way. I ain't afraid of life times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. That's right. I said if you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you just what you can kiss. Alright folks, welcome to the Stony Ridge. If this is your first time on the Stony Ridge Farm Channel, please think about pounding that like button, jump in here, subscribe to the channel. This is our brand new six month old Woodmiser LT40. I've been so busy with farm projects, I just haven't had a chance to get this thing fired up. We're going to start with a little bit of an educational moment. And this is the hydraulic controls for the L Woodmiser LT40 and this is the LT40 Extra Wide. We'll have it out in the sunshine here in just a minute. I recently had a trailer, a little flatbed trailer stolen from me. I let a friend borrow my trailer. He was actually going to buy the trailer and it got stolen from me. So anything and everything trailer wise on the farm has one of these little critters on it. This is called a blockhead, okay? Blockhead uh, trailer hitch block, okay? So this blocks your trailer hitch. There's no way to saw it off. I mean, I guess you could grind it off if you had a portable grinder or something like that. But by the time you did that, you'd get caught stealing it. So we have a little key and I'll show you how this works. This blocks off that where your ball goes on. This is a two inch ball. Here's how it works real quick. And I'm going to post a link to this. So when you slide it over top of your ball, you push that up, you turn the key just like so and it locks that into place and you can't get in there and cut that. You'd have to grind out all around here, cut the whole bottom off of this thing. So this is something that I'm using for security purposes here on the farm. Again, push that up, turn the key, just like so, and that's it, drops down. So I'll post a link to this guy. This again is called the blockhead, okay? And <laughs> who wants their expensive sawmill stolen? Who wants anything stolen? So every trailer on the farm has one of these on it. Uh, if I can possibly install it. Just a little tip to keep your trailer from getting stolen or your wood miser from getting stolen or anything like that from happening. I'm telling you guys, when something like this gets stolen, people don't care. Nobody cares. You're not going to find it. You're not going to get it back. My trailer is long gone, the one that I had stolen. It's just long gone. It's gone. If I would had one of these on here, I think it cost like 20 bucks, I would still have my trailer. A little lesson learned from me. So we're going to hitch up to this thing and hopefully the ATV will pull it on out of here. like a dream with the ATV but I will tell you that's a little bit of a heavy machine this thing has trailer brakes on it it's a nice trailer setup so I'm pulling it nice and slow with the ATV it's a little bit heavy for it in fact we may have bent the hitch installing it on the ATV the tongue weights pretty light but it's pushing me down the hill we'll take it nice and slow you guys are gonna be impressed by this huge log pile when the cows say hey <laughs>
right guys, so a rod comes with the uh, wood miser here. We pull this and the jack drops. Hopefully. <laughs> there it goes. And we'll find the sweet spot, jack it up till it clicks. Okay, we need to get it up off of the ATV, so we're gonna have to jack it up just a little bit more than one click. We're gonna have to go to the back and jack it up. So I'm learning. This is a learning process right here, okay? This is too much for the ATV. I learned that too. <laughs> there are one, two, three, four, five jack points on here, and we'll jack it up and get it level. Guys, the sun is going down <laughs> and we're gonna have to join you tomorrow but this is our first cant right here so we've trimmed off the bark and we've got a couple slabs laying right over here for the neighbor's fireplace and uh, this is our first cant now we're doing a little head scratching man there's a lot of learning that goes into this and if you think about it look at all the equipment that's required just to get this going dad's got his measuring tape out here so things we need i'll go over the things we need to have down here because you got to have a lot of stuff hearing protection eye protection uh you got to have the machine level there's so much that goes into this that um i knew it was going to be a job to get started for sure but uh we'll see you guys tomorrow day two and what an education i got this morning and i got yesterday running this machine i screwed up okay we'll talk about what i did i made a boo-boo um it's a learning process here you can see we've got some slabs over here laid out i've cut three four four three logs three total logs and i've familiarized myself with this machine a little bit more this is not something to be taken lightly to be honest with you this thing is like <laughs> when you first learn it it's like flying the space shuttle man there's so much to think about guys and now that i've had a little more education uh, i have a buddy that has a sawmill he's got two mills he's got a bandsaw mill and he's got an old frick mill so he came down we sat and we talked and we went through and we cut two logs and we talked a little bit about the things that we need down here and we're going to tell you the tools and stuff that we need down here and we're going to cut into the last log of the day beautiful beautiful lumber so what we're cutting here i've got a nice big pile and those are all the tools we're going to take it and show you all the tools but i've got white oak red oak and ash now the ash borer beetle has killed off most of the ash trees on the farm we had two trees that were standing dead so we cut them and they're huge beautiful logs and i'm actually going to give a gift today to a new neighbor i got a new neighbor building a house he's going to have a fireplace he's going to be coming up the driveway here in a bit probably won't be on camera but i'll show you what i'm going to give him so what we need for first of all <laughs> we need coffee it's afternoon late afternoon got the three o'clock coffee woes uh, coffee all right <laughs> so let's talk about the machine first of all this is the debarker this is the mill itself this is the Kohler fuel injected 38 horsepower monster of a motor okay this is your control center for your mill this is your hydraulic control center and there's all sort I mean you see there's six knobs down there look at all the switches and knobs there's just so much going on so I'm not gonna feed you with the same fire hose I've been fed with over the last few days. So you can see right down there, 
That's where the sawdust comes out, where we started cutting. Got a little sawdust pile right here. We're positioned here for a reason. Slabs right here, sawdust here, manure pile right here. So we'll take this sawdust and shovel it over into the manure and we'll spread it out on the land to help feed the land here on the Stony Ridge Farm. Now, let's go over here and we'll show you what we've already cut and then we'll go over the tools that you need there is a ton of tools that you need for uh, getting set up for a sawmill. Just a ton of tools we need to have down here. We're going to build a shed and we're going to put this thing in a shed. My advice to someone looking for a sawmill, don't buy a mobile mill. Don't buy a mobile mill. Uh, just talking to Nathan with uh, Out of the Woods. And uh, guys, I'll post a link to his channel. Nathan's a great guy. He's taught me a little bit on the sawmill here. He's a great dude. He's just about to hit 100,000 subscribers. So out of the woods i'll post a link down in the video description this is our tym 254 tractor and it's perfect for offloading onto the pallet forks so i'll take the wood off the mill put it on the pallet forks and you're going to see all this here in just a minute now what i'm getting ready to give to my neighbor is that that thing of beauty right there so what this is let me get the camera turned around all right i don't know about you guys but i enjoy fishing but I also enjoy watching other people catch big fish. And this is a big fish. This is a big, beautiful piece of ash. Not, I mean, it is just absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna give this to my neighbor. It's about six inches thick. Again, about 13 inches, yeah, 12 to 13 inches wide. And that brings me to some of the tools that we're gonna need. So this is a gift. Isn't that a beautiful gift? Uh, this was the center cut on this ash log that was about this big around it's probably about 24 inches through beautiful beautiful wood so let's go over and we'll talk about all the tools that we're going to need and then we'll drop a log on the mill this is not to be taken lightly this is a chore not to be taken lightly we have to be safe it's a little chilly out here we're supposed to get some ice and snow tonight so what we have to have is a measuring tape a rubber mallet a pair of pliers these are all handy things to have while you're running your mill uh, these are things that I didn't know I would need. Now the measuring tape kind of is a no-brainer. I didn't have that down here right away. Um, ATF, automatic transmission fluid. I've got two different types of bottles. I got a spray bottle of it and I have this bottle right here. This is one of those Meyer soap bottles. I save all those old bottles so I can reuse them. And this is great for lubricating the mill and lubricating the chain. You have to keep everything well lubricated so that it lasts for a long, long time. Now, chainsaw, definitely this is our 572 XP. We also have the Toro battery powered chainsaw. This is for cutting big knobs off of uh, the logs right here. Uh, in case we run them over the mill and they got a big knot on them, or we just need to cut the end off, we've got our big chainsaw from HL Supply. I'll post a link to their website down there. Um, other things. Need a cant hook. This is a log ox four in one forestry multi tool. This is the cant hook that we're using here with our mill, and it'll turn these great old big logs despite the length of it. It's a great tool. Awesome. High quality built in America. And we also have a maul or a wood splitter, or <laughs> I guess you could call it a sledgehammer. So, might need that. We've got to move logs, we've got to bump them. So, being able to hit that log is important. We need pencils, we need sharpies, we need lumber crayons, all that stuff to mark with. We also need big pry bar. Okay, this is a big old pry bar tamper, and this is hearing protection. So we'll be using that here in just a second. Big old pry bar, always good to have because you don't want a log to roll back on you. So you can stab this in the ground, that end in the ground, and stop the log from rolling back on you because this stuff is dangerous more people get hurt in logging accidents than probably any other uh, type of uh, agricultural um, career field so it's it's very dangerous to work with logging stuff also the old trusty this is the toro leaf blower dude with the turbo button <laughs> i use this all the time now man so got to keep the mill clean got to blow off the mill so when i get done at the end of the day today i'll blow it off and i'll blow it off in between logs and make sure i'm getting everything clean and i'm not missing something that could be happening like a hydraulic leak or something like that that's enough jibber jabber let's throw a log on the mill and the first log we're going to throw on has been sitting on the forest floor this is an oak it's about 12 eh, maybe 14 inches around that log has been sitting on the forest floor for two years okay you won't believe what comes out of these logs and i'll take you up at the end of the video and i'll show you the ash boards that we cut already and the oak boards that we cut this is a white oak 
This is a red oak, okay? Bark's a little different. Flaky bark, really rough bark. So white oak, red oak, red oak, white oak, white oak. I wanted to run through the white oak that I had laying on the forest floor before I got into the really, really nice wood, okay? And we also have a dead standing white oak over here. That sucker's going on the mill too. This stuff makes beautiful boards and what we're making are typically a one by six or five quarter, which is one and a quarter by six, eight, 10 or 12 inch wide. Cool. In order to start the mill, we simply turn our key on, but let's talk about the keychain first of all. So this is one of those fishing keychains. You want a bright colored keychain so you don't lose your keys. Inside the keychain, these are our Stony Ridge Farmer work gloves, by the way. Uh, I've got some lumber pencils and stuff that I might need. So always thinking, always thinking ahead. Okay, so we'll put our key in the ignition and we'll turn it on. You hear the fuel pump engage. You want to make sure this is off. This is in the off position. This is our debarker. You want to make sure our blade is in the off position. And both of these knobs are in the neutral position. Okay, this controls the speed of the mill. This controls the direction which the mill goes. Okay, this is up and down. We'll fire it up and get her started. <laughs> Simple. It ain't rocket science, but I'll go through all this stuff in a future video. Today, we're just going to lay a log out. We're going to show you what kind of work this mill can do. It is just super awesome. All the slabs, none of this will go to waste. Anything small enough to chip up will go in the back of the dump truck and be spread out on the farm. And anything that can be used for firewood will be used for firewood. No waste whatsoever.
guys it doesn't look like much just sitting right here like this got a little bit of water we're gonna clean this guy off a little bit and we're gonna show you just how beautiful so we cut five quarter in other words uh, inch and a quarter pieces right here this could be used for flooring or construction or anything like that fence boards whatever you want to use it for but uh, absolutely beautiful wood this has been sitting in the forest floor and I knew I was gonna get a sawmill a couple years back so it's been sitting in the forest floor for about two and a half years since 2018 okay so about two years something like that let me show you what this grain looks like once we wet it down it is absolutely beautiful white oak and we got five quarter boards a bunch of them that we laid off to the side over here and we'll set these upright and we'll edge them we'll take the edges off meaning take the bark edges off so this is an eight inch board and those will end up being six inch and four and five inch and we can use them for all sorts of projects here on the farm we're always needing lumber for sure let's get a good look at this grain it's absolutely beautiful this makes it all worthwhile look at that oh man look how beautiful that is just awesome So that's day one and two, my first experience with the wood miser. We've got a couple stacks of lumber up here I'll take you to and I'll show you in the during the end credits right here, but that's what's going on. All sorts of awesome, Look, I mean, look at this pile of logs here. So we've got white oak, red oak, and ash. Got all sorts of stuff going on here. So we'll be running the mill probably for several days. It takes me just about an hour and 10 minutes to run one log. So we've got some big stuff over here. The neighbor was super happy with that mantelpiece. I mean, how awesome is it that I can fire this thing up in the first day, be able to give a gift to a neighbor. So pretty cool, guys. Thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm. I really appreciate you. I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, this, it takes some equipment to do this stuff. Offloading onto a set of pallet forks right here has been very, very helpful. And all these boards will get stacked and stickered and we'll talk a little bit more about that as time goes on. And I learn more, you can learn more and you can decide whether you want a sawmill or whether you want to just buy your lumber. I tell you what, it's cheaper to just buy your lumber. These are probably worth about eight bucks a piece, eight or 10 bucks a piece, unless I dry kill them and then I put tournament of flooring or something like that. So awesome. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. We're having a blast running the mill. First day, day one. We'll see you guys next time. All right? We'll Woo! come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wild.